when he came to Leicester, God, he was a rough diamond, you know, and he was so raw, mate, and, and so angry and bits and bobs and, you know, he always, he always said, I remember reading something, he said something that I never liked him. Players have a responsibility to grow the game, yeah. don't we, Jim? Like we do. Mm. You know, player appearance, all that. We have a responsibility to grow engagement, to grow the game. And I think also media do have a responsibility to get engagement, make the game seem exciting, even if it's not. Like, whatever. But there is an element of that as well. Like, we want we want rugby to be, to last, you know, not just next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, especially with everything that's going on, you know, which I think you spoke to with Dave last week, Flats. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you want rugby to last. Um but you also want people to be engaged in it and, and like it. So I think there's a responsibility from a player's point of view, absolutely, first and foremost. But I think there's also a responsibility at times for media to try and promote the game and maybe maybe jazz it up a bit sometimes, even if it ain't that good. If that's what we're trying to do. And that's what, Polish we're, doing. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. Jim, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one lad who's doing that at the minute is Ellis Genge. Yeah. Now, when he left Leicester, I was like, that's a bit weird. Mm. Even though I know his backstory, Captain obviously won the Prem, everything yeah. that's happened in the background. But having watched him, and we're recording after the first game of the season, yeah, after the way that he played for Bristol's and the emotion that he showed in that game, you're like, you know what? I kind of get it. And he's one of these characters that understands, I think, without speaking for him, we're going to do a podcast, we're, we're going to chat. But Youngsy, he'd be like a player, well, both of you, so the Youngsies, like he'd be a player that probably branches about, like across both your hearts, really. The way that he plays, Tom, yeah. like yourself, the physicality, I, I, I reckon he knows Banksy, so I imagine he likes London as well, Lenny. Do you know what I mean? So he's, he's a player. Brilliant, he's brilliant. Tom, he's with player. you, like you would have played yeah, he's next a to him. And like when when he came to Leicester, God, he was a rough diamond, you know. And he was so raw, mate, and, and so angry and bits and bobs, and you know, he always he always said. I remember reading something. He said something that I never liked him when he first turned up, and that's a lie. I thought he was brilliant. I just had to ride him fairly hard to get him to 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 help him to fulfil some of his talent do you know what I mean because there was so much raw and you don't get people like that no you You've don't got that C-U-N-T I'd say you know that little bit about them you're like bloody hell mate you want you want that you need that to be successful and the way you play and yeah so like I've got massive respect for Ellis and the, the character he's become and the player he's become and the, the, the bloke he's become you know and as you say at the weekend he was unbelievable it's so good to see him yeah, he just loves his rugby doesn't he, he loves that physicality that aggression and such a good man off the field as well. I'm really, I'm really proud of Genge. Like mm, as Tom I said, when he well. first turned up, like no one really knew too much about him. Mm. He was really raw diamond. Like lads could see, like like this guy, so explosive, so powerful. He's got that bit about him where he might, he might mm. lose the plot, which is great because you need that uh, abrasiveness. And you're trying to like. It took a while to work out how do you get the best out of Genji because yeah. I think a lot of the time... Because even when you praised him, he would probably think react criticism. to criticism a little bit at times. Mm. But no, I'm, I'm being serious. Like, well done. Or something but like I that. look at Genji and like, it sounds corny as hell. But I, I, he literally arrived a boy, left a man, mate. Yeah. And I look at Genji and Genji's like 25, 26, quite a bit younger than us. Like, mm. Do you know what I mean? But I don't look at him like... I look at him like he's 35 and, and done it all and mm. like got all that experience. Like, it just... I'm, I'm really proud of him. I'm really proud. And do you know what? The weekend's brilliant because he played so well, showed that raw, you know, it shows to me that that was the right call for him to yeah. do that. So good on him, mate. He's a great bloke. He is a great, great bloke. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, again, we talk about the authenticity. I think what you get with him is real. I watched his interview with uh, Joe Joyce after the game and there, there might have been an F-bomb or whatever. It's edgy. It's him. And you look at American sports and the athletes are allowed to be who they are. Yeah. They, they, you know, he's not media trained. He comes from where he comes from, mm -hmm. his background. Uh, but he delivers on the pitch, but he's also receptive. And I think, you know, you mentioned, I forgot about that interaction that you had in South Africa. I think now mm. you may be allowed to do that. I think the times are changing. You know, if Genji mm. comes off and he's like, oh, you know, Joe Marler's similar. Like mm. he, he speaks similarly down there. I think it's important to be able to show the person behind the athlete because, you know, the more I think about it and the more people I speak to about where the game is now, we play one of the best sports, one of the toughest sports on this planet ever. You think about what we've had to do to get where yeah. we get, what we have to, what we did week in, week out, Lenny, what you still do. Like, you know, it ain't nothing like that out there. It's fucking crazy, mm -hmm. you know? And part of that is you look at the characters in there. 
you know, all shapes and sizes. We all speak about that. All walks of life. You know, we're seeing that more. It's, it's, you know, the the, the mix of people. It's just mental. And I love how, and we're, everyone's talking about Genji at the minute, and there'll be more. And there was a lot of weight put on Marrow's shoulders about him trying to take the game forward. And yeah. he might not want to do that. Faz doesn't want to do that. Owen doesn't want to do that, and that's fine. And we're learning now. I'm learning that no, Owen doesn't need to do that. Yeah. You know, but Genji seems like he does want to do that, and let's fucking roll with it. Do you know what exactly, I mean? Let man. him do it. Let him go. You, you can't. Know? We can't make someone be someone they're not. You know. Um, and like you're you say, only going to starve them, aren't you? You're only going to yeah. make them worse for that. You've got so, to let him let him be him because he does it bloody well. Yeah, he does. There's no, there's no, no one's better at being Genji than Genji. So let him be it. 